Did that just make my under eyes darker? Because I'm pretty sure it did. You can sit here and look pretty and I'll just use something else. Wish me luck. Will this just make it worse? We're about to find out. So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving this bad boy right here a second chance. Not that it was bad the first time that I used it, but I did have to work with it a little bit. I also just, I think I said in that video that the color scheme just, I don't look at this and be like, oh, I can see so many looks that I can make. I don't know what it is, but since I filmed with this palette, I have not used it since. And I was like, you know what? It's sitting in my drawer. I'm gonna try and make some more looks out of it. I think they're restocking this in March. I did ask you guys on Twitter, but if you already have this palette, I thought I would use it again. I'm also gonna be doing a kind of shop my stash. When I was doing some of my decluttering videos recently, which I will be doing more of, there were so many bits of makeup where I was like, oh, I used to love that, or oh, I should really use that more, or just me being like, I can't really remember what I think of that product. So I'm pretty much doing a full face of, um, giving products a second chance of life. If you guys wanna see more of these type of videos and me digging out old makeup products that I haven't used in ages and doing new things with them, give this video a thumbs up. Let me bring you a bit closer. So all I have on my skin right now is the Charlotte Tilbury Tinted Moisturizer stuff. I put it on my skin because my face and my neck were not really matching. And uh, I actually really like it. It gives like the tiniest bit of coverage. If anyone knows of a drugstore alternative to that sort of thing, Please let me know. Right, so the foundation that I'm gonna be using today, I kept this just because I was like, oh my God, Longcom sent me a product and I just didn't wanna get rid of it, even though at the time that I was sent this, it did not match me at all. So I'm hoping that this will match me now. Um, it is the Teint Idole Ultra Wear. It says 24 hour wear and comfort retouch free SPF 15 and I've got this shade uh, on the back. It says 0140NN00. Oh wait, I haven't primed. A primer that's been sitting in my makeup drawer for ages and I have not used in forever. Is this one by Revolution Pro? This is the Perfecting Featherweight Primer. I used to quite like this, but haven't used it in a long time. It's almost like a mousse texture, but it's very smooth. I think the reason I haven't used many of my silicone-y sort of mattifying primers in a while is because for some weird reason, I kind of prefer hydrating primers. Any primer that leaves my skin a little bit tacky, I'm down for. I mean, it's definitely smoothed over my skin fully and gives that kind of blurring effect. It feels nice, but then they're almost a bit slippery. Do you know what I mean? The only thing I remember about this foundation is that it oxidized like crazy. Ooh, it smells like flowers. Oh, don't you just love rush hour? I mean, look, you can already see it getting darker on my face. It smells so good. It smells like a luxury floral perfume. Oh God, I got foundation in my hair. To be honest, the fake tan that's already stuck in my hairline, it, it's not gonna make much difference. I really like the finish of that. I'd say it's kind of medium coverage because you can still see my blemishes and stuff down here. That looks nice. I would say it's almost like a demi-matte, semi-matte finish. What's the difference between demi-matte and semi-matte? Like similar sort of feels to Maybelline Superstay, how it just feels like it's gonna stick to your skin. For my concealer, I have got the collection Lasting Perfection Ultimate Wear Concealer. I've got the shade Cool Medium 2 and Fair 1. And I've also got for under my eyes, the Bourjois 01 Ivory Radiance Reveal Concealer. I used to freaking love this. However, this was my shade for when I was pale, but I do seem to remember it oxidizes a bit. Kind of smells like watermelon. Is that what it is? Maybe not watermelon. I don't know. It smells nice. It smells nice and fresh. I think I just used to like this concealer because it was it feels quite lightweight, like it doesn't feel too thick under your eyes. But then at the same time, I definitely would not say this is full coverage. But it just feels really nice on your skin. And then on my blemishes, I am going to go in with the Collection Lasting Perfection. I am going to use Cool Medium 2. This might actually be a bit dark. The only thing about the Collection Concealer is the colour range used to be so bad. They definitely did expand it though, but oh my goodness, do you remember when I used to use this concealer all the time? Yeah, I can tell already this is oxidizing and it's gonna be too dark. If you're in America, do you have collection makeup yet? Because it used to be such a big thing in the UK, this concealer especially, but I don't know if you have it in the US yet. Definitely too dark. It's okay, let me go in with Fair One and just add over the top. Oh my goodness, look how orange my jaw has gone. It looks like I've got a beard. My skin has been breaking out so much recently and I have got no idea why. I just woke up one morning and it was like, here you go, 
have 10 new friends to sit on your face. I'm not too crazy about the colour match of this concealer. I think I would probably still use Fair One. For powder, I've actually dug out three different ones depending <laughs> if this one matches me or not. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Powder. I could never use this because it was supposedly translucent but it's not translucent. Like, can you see how dark this is? It's very translucent powder. It's definitely got some color to it. And when I used to use this, it was just way too dark for me. So I'm hoping it's gonna be okay now. So I'm just gonna swirl my brush in here. I do like how it's got a mirror. I'm gonna use it to set my under eyes. Oh crap, I did not just mean to set my eyelid. I will go in with an eyeshadow primer to fix that. Did that just make my under eyes darker? Cause I'm pretty sure it did. I'm gonna do my whole face with this just to make it match. Now that I put it all over my face, it doesn't seem too bad, but I do feel like it needs to be a little little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go in with the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Setting Powder in light. This has got a tiny bit of a glow to it, I think. I seem to remember. Did that do anything? To be completely honest, I'm not the biggest fan of either of those powders. So one of the bronzers that I can't actually remember if I've ever used is the MUA Bronzed Matte Bronzing Powder in Solar 130. But surely I haven't used that because that looks way too dark. Let's give it a shot. Hopefully it's not too pigmented. Okay, it is definitely pretty pigmented. This bronzer is just too dark for me. Oh God. <sighs> yep, nope, yep, nope, yep, too dark. Well, that is clearly not my color, so I don't know why I even bothered testing it, but I'm gonna be getting rid of that one because there's no way that this is gonna work for me. <laughs> I'm gonna try and lighten it up with a bit of my Milani 09 Dolce Baked Bronzer. And this one is a little bit glowy as well, which I absolutely loved about it. Blush, if you've been here a while, you would have remembered that this is the blush that got me into blush. This is the L'Oreal Life's a Peach Blush. Used to smell of peaches. It no longer smells of peaches. I used to love this and I don't know why I stopped using it. I think I just discovered other blushes because this was kind of the first one where I was like, wow, I like blush now. It is quite light though. I think I prefer a slightly darker blush these days. Oh my God, that's so pretty. I love that still. I think that's so pretty. I used a bit more than I used to, but that's really nice. Wait, I didn't contour my nose. I'm gonna use the Milani one again. Probably a bit shimmery to contour your nose, but oh well. For highlighter, I have the Beauty Bay Living My Best Light Brilliance Palette. I used this a few times and then just kind of chucked it in my drawer and forgot about it. And when I was looking for makeup to use earlier, I swatched this shade and was like, oh my god. It's kind of a strange formula though. It's almost like in between a cream and a powder. Think Colourpop sort of texture. So I think I just got a bit scared of it and was like, you can sit here and look pretty and I'll just use something else. And I'm using the shade Charmed. Actually, maybe I should mix it with this one because that looks a little bit dark. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go straight in with Charmed. Yeah, see, this is the thing. You kind of have to really rub your brush in there because it is weirdly creamy. Ooh. Okay, that is really beautiful. But then when I turn to the front, you can kind of see it like a little bit of a darker shadow. So I am gonna mix in a bit of the shade Strobe, which is more pink. Wow, that's blinding. It is really nice, but I think it takes a little bit more working with than my other highlighters that are just straight up powders. I mean, it is pretty stunning. I'm definitely satisfied with that. What do you guys think? Do you think it looks like too much from the front? Please let me know. I think it, I mean, I think I can get away with it. That's really nice. It is nice. I'll give it that. I think this is pretty affordable as well. I'm going to give the soap brows another try. This is the Iconic London Brow Silk, pretty much a soap in a thing for 20 pounds. So I'm literally just going in with it dry with a spoolie that's covered in fluff. And I'm just gonna brush that through my eyebrows. Ooh, I'm still getting the same problem that I would get with every type of like brow soap that I've tried. It makes it look like I've got dandruff in my eyebrows. Why does it do that? Ooh, they definitely do feel like they would stay like that though. It feels quite thick and waxy. I've got the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in Ash Brown. I used to really like these, ooh, I used to really like these pencils, but I think I stopped using them just because they were a little bit harder than other alternatives that I found. As in like, you have to press quite hard to actually get the colour to pay off. I think they look pretty good. Then for my brow gel, I'm using the Topshop Chase Brow Definer. I was obsessed with this and I kind of lost it. And I don't even know if Topshop do makeup anymore, but they should because their stuff was so good. But this brow gel was such a perfect colour. I have been loving a pretty fluffy, big eyebrow recently. Yep, those are some pretty bold eyebrows. Well, that one's a bit messy, isn't it? 
And then we move on to Shane and Jeffrey's conspiracy palette. Today, I'm gonna try and do a look that I haven't done before with this palette. In the YouTube video that I did, I used the red and orange and um, yellow sort of colors and did a fiery look. In the Instagram TV video that I did, I used the neutral shades. So today I'm gonna try and do a look with this purple as the focus. But something that I did definitely learn from the first time is that you need a wet base for this. So I'm gonna use a bit of the Revolution Cut Crease Canvas as my eye primer, even though like I'm not doing a cut crease. Maybe I will, who knows? But um, I really should not have set my eyelids and done my brow bone highlight, but it's totally fine. <laughs> wish me luck. So first of all, I'm dipping into Not A Fact, which is the bright purple. I've got no idea how pigmented this is because I haven't used it before. And I'm gonna start blending that through my crease. Wow. I guess I'm just gonna keep adding more. I'm gonna try and wing it out a little bit. It is definitely sticking to that sticky base. It's a little bit difficult to work with, but I'm doing something here, I think. I'm gonna dip into a tiny bit of Flaming Hot. Am I? Yes. Okay, and I'm gonna use that to blend. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. That's too much. I was gonna use that to blend out the edges. What, what am I doing? Okay, now that's just made that pink. Instead of doing that, I'm gonna take the shade Tanacon, which is this lighter brown. And I'm gonna use that to blend out the edges. I'm gonna take my brush and then I'm also gonna dip into my peels, which is this pink. Oh my gosh, I forgot how crumbly these eyeshadows are. I'm gonna go back into Not A Fact, which is the purple. And I'm just gonna really deepen up the outer corners and blend that inwards. I'm also gonna take that shade onto my lower lash line. I mean, it is very pigmented, I'll give it that. I was kind of planning to do a more wearable look today, but I would not really class this as particularly wearable. <laughs> I'm going back in with my Revolution Cut Crease Canvas and I am gonna do like a semi-cut crease. Although this brush is way too like product-y, <laughs> way too saturated to actually do a cut crease with. Oh God, I think I put way too much on actually. Those are not even at all. Then on the inner part of my lid, I'm gonna take the shade Just A Theory, which is this rose gold sort of color. Oh wow, it's actually quite light. Ooh. You know what, I'm not crazy about this shimmer. I feel like it could be more shimmery. And then taking Sleep Paralysis, which is this, I don't really know what color this is, gunmetal gray. And I'm putting this on the other half of my eyelid. That one is a bit more shimmery. Yeah, okay, that one definitely packs more of a punch. And then I'm going back in with Not A Fact, the purple. I'm just gonna blend over those edges. I am happy with it, apart from the unevenness, so I'm gonna try and correct it. Will this just make it worse? We're about to find out. I honestly don't know if that's better or worse. Then I'm also taking a bit of sleep paralysis onto my lower lash line, just over the top of the purple. And then on my inner corners, I'm taking Ranch. Oh my God. Jesus, okay, that is bright. And there we go, ladies and gents, that is the finished eye look. Uh, I actually am really happy with it. It's definitely better than my first attempts of using this palette, and I really like how everything blended in the end, although it did take me a long time. I'm taking the Ico Black Magic Liquid Liner, I think. I used to quite like this, but I don't know why I haven't used it in a while. It's got a very similar brush to the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner Brush. Or should I say KVD Beauty? It's really nice actually, really easy to use. And then for my mascara, I'm using the Max Factor Lash Revival Mascara. I have a feeling I really didn't like this, but I'm gonna give it another go. Hmm, well, yeah, it's not really doing a whole lot. So I just literally applied about Mmm, probably about six layers of that mascara to make it look pretty decent. It just didn't really do it for my lashes. There's nowhere near as enough volume. Then for my lips, I've got the Anastasia Stripped Liquid Lipstick. I have not worn this in ages. I think I bought this when I was in LA and I was so excited to go to the Anastasia store and then I barely wore it. I just never really wear matte 
liquid lipsticks anymore. To be fair, it is a really nice colour though. Like, I'd still definitely wear this colour, but I don't know. I just prefer having, like, a tinted lip balm and some lip liner. <laughs> so this is the overall look using a bunch of products that I have not used in forever. And I actually kind of really like it. I'm really impressed with almost everything, apart from the mascara, apart from the bronzer. Pretty good going. And I'm actually really happy with the eye look that I did with the Conspiracy palette. It's definitely my favourite look that I've done with it so far. But I do definitely want to try and use it more because I definitely don't use it enough for how much I spent on it. I just realised I never highlighted my brow bone. I'm going to take the tiniest bit of ranch. I just find the shimmers in this palette aren't super shimmery. Some of them are definitely more satin. They've got a lot of pigment in them, but they're not actually that foily. Right, so I'm just gonna answer a question of the day. If you guys have got any questions for me, you wanna be nosy, leave them down below with the hashtag question of the day. Today's question comes from Samantha Hayes, and she has said, would you do a house buying process video or something along those lines once you've completed and settled into your new house? I'm buying at the minute and I found it so useful to watch videos of YouTubers explaining their experience. If you guys would like to see that, then it's definitely something that I can do. Um, I will probably most likely do it on my second channel rather than this channel. I will be doing some moving vlogs on this channel, but something like a video entirely about, I don't know, answering questions maybe about the house buying process and my experience, I will probably put on my second channel. Um, if that's something that you would want to see. Right, I'm gonna leave this here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That really helped me out. If you wanna see more of my face, then you can subscribe. I'd also love it if you leave me a comment down below. I will try and get back to you. Recently, I keep replying to a bunch of comments in the ad breaks of Love Island when I'm on my laptop. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.